Hi guys, Dorothy here with Done by Dorothy and we are working on binding our signatures today. And what I am doing is I have got a piece of paper, it is two inches by nine inches and I have marked the center. I always mark the center, that's just something that I do. Um, we want to have it, have our signatures even spaced. Although we know we have a lot of stuff, you know, our thing is sort of wide. so. We're going to want to leave some extra space here. So what I'm going to do, because this is just me, I don't want an inch gap between my signatures. So I am going to mark three quarters and three quarters. So let me mark three quarters. Because if I have extra space, I would much rather it be towards my cover, you know, so I can, there's another train guys, I am sorry, do we have, and I know I have three quarters over here, so I'm just going to line this up in my center and mark it at a quarter, which is obviously the same, or, or you mark three quarters and mark it, okay, so I have that here, so I have a half an inch, so if I put my signatures here, I'm going to have a half inch here, I'm going to have that extra quarter inch on the sides. But we have so much, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's so chunky that we sort of need that extra space. Um, so what I'm going to do, and you know, you may be like, oh, why in the world would you mark it this much? Um, but I actually want to mark this one eighth over. And I sort of want to split that up. And I'll give you the measurements, the exact measurements of where I mark it. I just sort of go with looks until I get the feel of where I want it to be. Okay. I mean, this is just how I do it. Okay. So, I'll have a half inch, basically three quarters of an inch on the inside, and a half an inch on the outside. Um... So I will have that extra space. Now I can erase my center line too because I use it just to sort of help me. And I may do this like totally confusing for you, but I'm giving myself a little bit of extra room in the center because, you know, if you remember, we had our signatures, you know, they're pretty chunky, you know, so to make them where they lay more correct, we need a little bit more space in the center. At least for me, that's how I do it. Other people may do it differently. Okay, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna do a three hole pamphlet stitch for these signatures. So I'm gonna mark, we have nine inches. So obviously we know the center is at four and a half. So we're gonna mark four and a half. And actually, I'm going to turn my ruler around like this because of the ruler type that I have. That way I can just draw the line straight across. If you don't have a ruler like that, then, you know, mark it and... Okay, so there's my four and a half. Okay. So my half between my four and a half is going to be two and a quarter. So I'm going to mark mine at two and a quarter. So again, I'll give you the measurements for these in a minute. And again, I'm going to find two and a quarter and mark it at two and a quarter. Okay. So, so your marks that are horizontal need to be at two and a quarter, four and a half, and two and a quarter. Now, you could, you know, move these farther up to the top. It doesn't really bother me. You know, if you wanted to move them up another inch, you know, we could do that. I'm just going to do mine right there in the center. Um, you know, we could actually do five pamphlet hole. I'll move it up an inch. That way it's a little bit more balanced. So, I don't know, that is in the center. So, I think, actually, I think I'm going to leave, uh, let's go a little bit higher. We'll go an inch more. We'll do it. So, don't listen to me. <laughs> Let's do it at three and a quarter. 
just so we have something higher at the top. And again, you know, this is how you learn is just going my problem and I'll tell you why. I'm sitting here going, wait a minute, what did I do? Because when I make these, like when I'm making this template right here, I keep them. And then, um, I need to get three and a quarter from the center line. Um, I keep them. So, you know, you measure them the first time, then you don't have to measure them again. Now, We Are Memory Keepers does have a binding tool that you can purchase. Um, it's sort of pricey. Um, unless you buy it like with a coupon at Michael's or whatever. And they do have a binding tool where you don't have to figure this all out. It's all laid there. You just literally have to punch it. So, I mean, that does. And this pops off. These unscrew. And this lifts off so you can actually use it. And then place it down and, you know, where you can do flip it this way. And do them. So, it just depends on, you know, one's for binding. Uh, one is for, like, your you know, binding, you know, notching through the things and whatever. And it comes with a pokey tool and a whole little kit of supplies. Um, okay, so we'll do it there. Then I'm going to use my pokey tool. I, this is a Sizzix, a Sizzix, uh, die tool. You can also use a, um, an awl. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that you can use. I'm just going to use mine now. I will tell you straight up, a lot of people use phone books. They will use old encyclopedias, that type of thing, to do this to protect themselves. If you are unsure about doing this, please use something instead of doing it. I'm used to doing this, so this is how I do it. I use a cutting mat. This is a Fisker's cutting mat underneath. And I'm really careful about where I place my fingers. So... Everywhere that there's a cross of lines, right there, right there. I hope that needs to be a little more centered. And right there. So there's six dots. We're going to poke a hole. That's how we're going to know where to poke the holes <clears throat> in our spine. So, and if you're doing this and you don't have anything behind it, please watch your fingers. I've done it enough that like I sort of know where or I can even put it down like this and put my tool there especially when making these and just sort of lift it up now when you're working with chipboard it's a little bit more difficult because there's a lot more pressure it's a lot thicker um, you know we're doing a hidden spine so you're not gonna have to poke through chipboard which makes it really nice Okay, so I'm just going to poke a hole through each one of these and just make sure you keep your fingers out of the way if you're doing that. And I just, what I do is put the tool against, can you see that, against the mat and then just sort of pull the paper up. So that marked those for us. So to do our hidden spine and go ahead and poke our holes in there where we need them, this is where we're going to use our hidden spine, or this is what we're using for our spine. I'm going to grab my scoreboard. And let's use my bone folder. You can use a scoring tool, whatever you want. Okay, so I have five inches. Okay, I know I want um, my spine is two inches, so I have an extra inch and a half on each side. So I'm going to score my paper at one and a half, and then I'm going to score it again at three and a half. And I'm going to go over that a time or two just to help secure it. They, these folds, we can go ahead and fold it. I'm not going to burnish it because I sort of want it out of my way, and we can do that later. These are going to come up the sides. So let me grab our, our binding, our book. So this is going to go in here, and these side pieces are going to be what comes up. 
on our book, right? Okay, this is gonna come up just to give extra security and to hold it better. Okay, so you're gonna wanna hold this. I grab paper clips, um, you can use whatever you want. I just use four paper clips. For this part anyway. Let me get my scoreboard out of the way. Okay. So I just sort of tap this down, you know, center and line it up. Hold my sides, make sure it's centered, which is really easy to do since you're just using cardstock. And then I just paper clip this in on the sides. That just gives you some support, you know, and then hold it closed. Make sure you got it slid in there to the right. You know, you don't have part of it leaning out because then your holes will be crooked. Make sure you line it up, get your paper clips in there. So I just paper clip it like that. Then I grab, again, my Sussex die tool, which a pokey tool, whatever you want to call it. And again, I'm going to watch my fingers and I'm going to, right where I poke the holes in my template, I'm going to poke it through there. Okay. And I'm just going to go through all six of those holes. Watch your fingers. Okay. Okay, so I've marked, I've punched all six of those holes. So I can take this aside, take these away. Put them back, put them back in my jar. And then you'll need binder clips too. Um, and you can buy those at Walmart, fairly expensive, the dollar store, whatever. Okay, now this, what I do with this is I grab my Sharpie marker. And on here, I will write two signature, two inch spine. nine inch height and then I will put that I have a little cubby that our little box that I keep all of them in and so mine will say you know I so when I pick this up I don't even have to sort of sit there and count and try to figure out I go okay two signature this is a two inch spine and a nine inch height so I know two by nine and it's gonna hold two signatures so I have this, I don't ever have to poke this again unless I lose this or poke it or accidentally sew it in. You know, I always double check to make sure I don't have mine in there because I have sewed them in before and went, oh no, it's sewed in there. Then you have to sort of tear them and rip them out around your thing. So I just do that and then I set that in my little cubby and I don't have to do that again. So I have that every time I, you know, am making a two inch signature or a a two inch by nine inch that's two signatures, I can grab that and go. Now, I sort of, these are pretty much, they're not exactly centered as far as like the width over here to the width over here, but that's what I would do. And I mean, I would never do a two inch spine with two signatures, except when they're really, really chunky. I would go for like, I actually probably would do like an inch and a half would be more mine and I would do it like I would do it an inch and a half and then my two marks would be at um, a half an inch and an inch so you know I would have a half an inch to all of them if they were big and bulky or if they're smaller you know and there's not a lot of ephemera in them you know then you can do them a quarter inch apart it just sort of depends on how you build your signatures so I don't know if you see so I have all my little holes marked there yay okay so then, what we have to do is let me find another piece of cardstock. Okay, I got this one. And let me grab my paper trimmer. Oops, I'm so sorry. I'm bouncing everything everywhere. Okay, I don't care what the width is, but I need it to be nine inches, just like our spine. Boom. So I cut that off, and I can use that to back ephemera. Okay, so I have this. So 
what I'm going to do. This is just how I found it easier. It doesn't really matter <laughs> where you do it. Um, let me grab a scoreboard and measure this out. You can use a scoreboard if it makes it easier for you. I've got um, two and three quarters, so that's going to be one and a, um, one and three eighths. Two, three is going to be my center. So, you know, I can just go ahead and score my center. So I know already that my holes are going to be along that line. So, I have that. Then all I have to do is what I, you know how to use paper clips or anything. I'm just going to hold this. I'm going to lay this out where they're side by side lined up. And oh, I don't need my pokey twine and my pencil. And I'm going to find the center of these holes that I made, right? Find the center and I'm just going to mark that in my score. And I'll go here, find the center of my holes. Or you know that <clears throat> you marked I you can mark it ahead of time because you know that you did it at four and a half and then three and a, um, three and a half back so you did it at four and a half and then at one inch so you can just mark it um, if you do mark it I still suggest laying it down next to here so you can make sure that they're exactly in the same spot because you're going to poke your holes in your signature with this. This is going to go in your binding, so these need to be lined up. Because if they're not, then your signature is going to be all wonky and crazy. So I'm going to set this to the side for a minute. I'm going to take this, and again, I'm going to poke my holes, watching my fingers. And this is a hidden spine, so it's a little bit easier. You're not poking through chipboard or anything. So then I'm going to grab my Sharpie again. And... I'm going to write um, two signature, um, two inch spine, nine inch height. And I just, you know, maybe you don't have to, you could, maybe you could write two by nine. That's, just, I'm sorry, that's just the way that I do it. And I'm going to set that with my other signature. And I try to make those where they're not the same color. And, you know, I'll paper clip them together and then set them in my cubby. Oh, you know, no, 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 no. I just totally messed that up. Because that's the one we were marking to use. So, you can use this as a template if you want, or you can make another one. So, I'm going to flip this over. Well, this doesn't matter. Yes, I'm going to use this and then keep it. So, I'm going to fold it and burnish it. Sorry, guys. I put it up before I used it. And that was, like, throwing me for a loop. So, I'm going to do that. Then... Here we go. I'm going to pull my signature out, and it doesn't matter which one that you're starting with. Okay? And now this takes a little bit of patience and concentration. I have many binding clips that I use. You can use large ones. I just use the small ones. And I usually use four, sometimes six. These aren't the ones I usually use. Huh. Where's my other binders? Where's my other... Oh, there they are. I'm like, wait a minute. Those do not look like my normal binding clips. So apparently I use the medium size ones. Okay. These are the ones that I use. They're about this size. Um, let me find my ruler. And I'll tell you how wide they are. Oops. The ones that I use are three quarter inch. So that's just what I use, like I said. And people use different. Okay. I always turn my pages long wise. That it just makes it easier for me. Then what I do is I start and this will be done differently in the next one because we'll be doing this before we actually put any ephemera in. So 
But if you're just starting out, I find, you know, putting, and what I'm going to do is just line those pages up. I want them to match. I want to make sure the, you know, the center of my signature is all together. So I'm just going to line those up, shake my pages, and I'm going to, and actually, you know what, if you want to, you can pull all your ephemera out, and that will help you, um, because you don't have all that balk to deal with. We'll go ahead and pull ours out and throw it over here, and hope we can remember where it all goes back in. I think I can remember where most of it goes back in, but at least that'll take a lot of that balk out of it. You don't realize how much stuff we have to throw it in there until you start pulling it out. Okay, so see, that lessened it. All that ephemera out, this is what you got to deal with. So, I mean, you can do that. It'll make it easier for you, especially if it's your first time. Okay, so. Now, what I do to help me out so I don't have to really do that um, as far as lining it up on the ends. Now, if your pages are flat, I fold my pages before I start putting my stuff in. First of all, I want to know where the spine is. But some people will create their pages with them laid completely flat. I've seen them do it. I, it would drive me crazy. Um, so, you know, if you've had your pages free folded, then all you have to do is sort of hold it and I sort of tamp it and tamp it from the bottom. Flip it up, tamp it from the top. I don't put a lot of ephemera or lace. I mean, I will put lace and stuff hanging out the bottom. So that makes it a little bit easier to line up. So... And it's really hard to match up the ends if you, you know, have crinkled paper. So, normally I, I pre-fold because that saves all that issue. Okay. So, I'm going to open it up on my crease. And I'm going to slide this in here. I'm gonna, and it will be 9 inches. It's the size of the cover. So, it will be a little bit big. But I actually like mine a little bit big. That's just me. You can cut it to eight and a half if it makes you feel more comfortable. And then I open my little clips. And I always put mine where it's halfway on the top, halfway on the page. And then I fold it down because that sort of holds it. Then I move to this side and I make sure I fold it and make sure it's lined up where it needs to be on. Making sure that you don't slide your template. Because if you go and push it down too hard, you will slide your... So I make sure it lays down nice. A lot of it's by feel. I flip it down. Now you can use, like I said, you can use the bigger ones if it makes you feel better. You know, some people feel better using the bigger ones. And, you know, I'll show you. Well, I don't want to do that, but... Um, you can do this at eight and a half if that makes you feel better or if you just sort of want to bend it over the end you know you can do that too and that sort of holds it even more sometimes I'll do that because I don't want you know I don't want to leave the little pokey things that these things cause on your pages sometimes especially if I'm doing it um, like an order for someone or you know I'm doing it for a gift and you can sort of feel, you know, feel your pages and know if something's not settling right. So. And I know this looks, way, it's way more easier to do if you're not trying to like explain how to do it while you're doing it. Okay. So see, that's lined up in there. It's right in the corner. So see how this one is sort of stuck out where it's like that? Or you can fold it over and do that if you want. It's totally up to you. But I have it in there and I have it lined up. So I'm going to grab my pokey tool. And again, watch your fingers. Um, this is where a lot of people like to put it in a book. Because it sort of helps cradle that and hold it. And I just hold it myself and do it. You know, if you're new, you may want to put it in a book. I'll show you. I'm trying to see if I have a book that I could use. Um, I have a whole lot of books I don't want to use. Okay, let's see. 
Aha, oh, here's one. Here's one I've tore apart and used before. And it's a big book. You Most people will use phone books, things like that. If you don't have a phone book, any kind of... So, this is a Civil War book, so I'm going to try to find a page that doesn't have something that I may want to use later because I'm a historic, a history fanatic. And the bad thing about this book is, okay, I can use this because it has a little map, but it's over to the side. Um, just trying to find if there was a page that maybe didn't have any right, any pictures on it, but just about every page of this has something on it, which is a not, it's nice. And there's tons of photos. Um, maybe this is one. No, but we'll use that because it's a big picture. Okay, and you just would put it down in your seam, down in your seam, and then just find your hole and push through. Pull out, find your hole, push through, and pull out. Find your hole, push through, and pull out. That's it. Okay, so not a lot to it. Okay. So, I'm going to pop this clip up just enough to pull my template out and fold it back down. And I'll put it right back on there, not letting my paper slide. That sort of holds it in this, into place. Okay, so we have that. Let me put this book to the side and we'll do it again for the next one. I mean, a lot of people will poke them all while they're going. I'm going to do it one at a time because I think it's easier. I like using a needle that has a sharp point. That's just me. Some people use blunt points. And then this is actually waxed cotton thread. You can buy cotton thread that's like quilting type thread. That's really strong. If you don't have wax thread, you can go into like the sewing area of like Walmart place like that. And Dritz has little beeswax things. And what you do is you take your thread and you just run it across. You just run it across there, back and forth, and that wax actually goes on your thread. So you can buy those. So okay. And I usually overdo this for whatever reason. That's always me. I always try to go like two and a half, a little bit more than two and a half, and everybody has their own whatever, that's just me, and now when I do it, it'll be too short because I said it was me, and then I just thread my needle just like you normally do, it is a big eyed needle, but it's not as big as like a darning needle, so it's a little bit more, and I just pull a little bit up, then I go in my center hole first. I'm going to pull through. And then I just grab this thread and hold it with my finger. Okay. So we're going to sew it, sew it into our spine. And I'm going to try to show you this. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. So this one I'm going to put on the right hand side. This side right here. So I'm going to put it through the center hole, and the first one's really easy because obviously it's not attached. So I just sort of hold it, and then I pull it tight to where it matches up. And you can sort of watch it. So then I'm going to go in the top hole here on the outside, and then I'm going to go, let me try to see if you can see. I'm going to go where I marked my hole, punched my hole right here. I'm going to slide it through. And by the time it gets easier, it's finished. And I sort of make sure it's not looped around because you will get it stuck like that sometimes. And then I just sort of put my needle to the side and pull it down and tighten it. And sort of pull this till it's snug because I'm holding it on the inside. And I'll show you like where I'm holding it on the inside. So then I just sort of lay it down and pull it tight. See how it's tight on the back? 
Okay. Then, because I don't want my thread to get in the way, I sort of put it down here and hold it under my thumb for a little bit, just for a teeny tiny bit. I'm going to push it through the bottom holes that I poked. I'm going to come back here and slide that into my last hole. Okay. I pull it through, sort of watching your thread because sometimes your thread will not up on you or you'll get like too much going through a hole. Okay. Then I make sure I'm still holding my center because I want it tight. I'll pull this through and I'll tighten it down and you'll be able to pull it in the inside, you know, where it's tight. So I don't tighten it so much that it buckles. You don't want the page to buckle. You just want it to be tight. Okay, so I flip it over. Then I go in this hole. Now, when I go through this hole, there's already a thread there. So I'm extremely careful to make sure that I don't split those threads. And you can sort of flip this over even if you need to. Let me tighten this thread up some. I'm going to pull it down to this, this direction now. Just so it's sort of out of the way. I'm going to slide it in there. And you can slide your paper back and sort of see where your other thread went in. And you're going to come up. But when you pull the tip through, you're going to make sure you come up on the opposite side of your thread. So come up on the other side. Push through. You're going to pull. So you want them both to be tied on the back like that. Through. Pull your needle out. Then I take the longest thread and I put it through, making sure that I pull this sort of snug, making sure everything's tight before I tie it. So it's tight back here. There's no extra play in it. So make sure I tighten it down. You know, and that's just, you can sort of work with it. I mean, you, so, I mean, that's how tight it is in the inside too. Okay. But my page isn't buckled. Then you're going to do a square knot. You're going to, because you have one on each side, I take the longest one, lay it underneath, and then put it through the center. And then I pull it tight. Okay. Then I take the long one, put it on top of the small one. Instead of behind, I put it on top and pull it through, which creates a square knot. Then I take it down. And then what I do is I take my bone folder where the knot is and I push the knot really tight. Sort of push it down and that sort of glues that together where it's... Like, and then I leave these strings off and then once I get everything done, if I want to hang charms off the end of it, I can do that. Okay, so we need to pay attention. One thing you need to look at immediately, what is up and what is down. So this is my up and I've got some repair to do because I just busted my fingers through there, but that's okay. It's easy money. Not a lot to do there. Okay. So I'm going to push this down. And first thing I can do is to get rid of these clips because I'm done doing this with this. So then we're basically going to re repeat the same exact process and I'm going to repeat it. I'm not really going to walk step by step through it again. I'll sort of mention it as I go. I'm not going to put my ephemera back in yet because that being flat was better. And I did pop my finger right through that, which is crazy, which I did use an old book page and I probably should have backed it with coffee dyed paper. Most of the time I do, but I didn't, but I will fix that. That's not a big deal. Okay. So let's put this to the side, grab our other signature. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to mix my ephemera up because I want to make sure that you know it goes back in the same so i'm going to put this ephemera to this side since i put the other to the other side and pull it all out we did have a lot of ephemera oh i forgot that envelope was there and all my little clips and all that wonderful stuff like this one's attached so it'll stay in my little envelope can go out this stuff can go out that tag can go out. I can even put that my paper clip out. 
that all this little ephemera all of this can go out this stuff can come out this is all going to make it easier because that stuff's not going to be in the way and i can put it all in now your option is and what i normally do is i make a bunch of ephemera um and when i make a journal normally when i make a journal this one i did a little bit different because <coughs> the whole process i was doing was a little bit different and um normally when i do i like i said i make my cover and everything first and bind all my pages and all of that stuff and then build my pages into my So I'm going to, again, remember we're going to tap it down. I build them all into my book as I go. So you'll see that with the next one. This is just, a lot of people do this. Um, well, a lot of people I've talked to have done it. And we were actually, I wasn't sure exactly when we started the ephemera because I was building it as I went. You know, creating along with you guys. So, oh. We need that in there. And again, if you have like flat flips or anything like that that might be in the way, then just you know move those out as you need to. And again, In here, I do want to check something really fast. Okay, here we go. So we've got everything in there. So I am going to poke my holes watching my fingers, guys. This is how I would do it normally. I don't get the book out. I just watch my fingers, you hold it from the side, push it through, and that's just how I do it. So there's a different option there. So but you know there's a lot of things after you get used to doing something you're able to do that maybe you shouldn't do when you're first starting because you know, there's a lot of danger, you know, you can cut your hand or, you know, the last thing you want is a pokey tool. I mean, that's, you see what that looks like. You don't want that going through your hand. And when we get done, um, when I get finished binding this one, that will be the end of this video. When I come back. Um, we will go ahead and um, glue the hidden spine in and do this, uh, the side pages. And then we'll go through and shove all the ephemera back in and all that. So just in case you're wondering. Okay. My paper's all wrinkly. Okay. So one, two. I always like having a little bit extra, so... You know, I'll go the extra half. And, you know, after you've done this for a while, you sort of get a little faster at it. So, again, I'm going to go through the center of my page. And I'm going to make sure that I have everything right side up. So, you know, you need to make sure you watch your images. Make sure, you know, you're not pinning it upside down. You know, one signature is one direction, one's the other. I've done it. It stinks. You have to take everything back out. Okay. I'm going to hold my thread. I'm going to go up through the top hole. And you can go through the top or the bottom. right out the bottom into the bottom hole again when you're doing this and you can do five 
um, five hole pamphlet stitch. Um, you can do a cross stitch spine. You see, um, I do one of those in the Tim Holtz journal that's in my intro video. If you notice the one that's all crisscrossed in all different directions, that's a cross stitch spine. Okay, then I'm gonna put this through the hole. I'm gonna look over here because I always find it easier to sort of look. So I make sure I'm not blowing the hole. Now, if something happens and you accidentally put something through the wrong page or it gets stuck in a page, do not worry, do not think you totally messed it up. Everybody has done it. It is just part of it. Okay, let me find. Okay. And then up through the bottom in the center. Okay, the big thing is making sure you tighten it down. And I always make sure I sort of do the little like guitar flip on it. And get on that. And then again behind through. Tighten in front, through, tighten, and we just bound it. I will get this fixed. Um, I think I'll just maybe do a little less ephemera down in there. Let me put a little glue on here. We're not going to, I mean it was glued up to that, so we're not losing a whole lot of space as far as that. The same thing with this one. Again, if you haven't made yours yet, you might want to back it. Um, you know, if you're using an old book page behind it. I may end up putting like some lace across the top of it or something to just sort of to secure it so it's not as likely to rip. Actually, I could do that now. Let me do that real fast while I'm sitting here. Um... So see, there's always things to fix and repair. Grab a tag and I'll just drop some lace at the top too. And it'll be all fixed. Oh, that's pretty much got a straight edge on it. So let me just put that across the top. Make sure I tuck it behind my little tree. Make sure I go high enough that it doesn't affect my tree. I'm not going to worry about if it's a little ragged. I'm not going to worry about if it's a little crooked. There we go. And good as new. Okay. And if that, it's a little loose there, but it is glued down on the bottom. It just, the top's not. Okay. So there's that. So that is the end of this video. Again. We've got them both in there. We do have a nice space in here and you can run lace or something through there or a really pretty Christmas ribbon. Like when I do mine, I may run the gold ribbon that I used down through the middle because I think that would be gorgeous. Um, and that sort of covers that and fills it so it doesn't look so gappy. Um, but yeah, so, you know, that's what we had and the ephemera makes it like this. So, you know, quite a bit there. So, you know, that's, gonna be where we're at when we get in our bind in our book in our cover so I will be back with the next video that will show us putting I'll put my the this in and we'll get the sides in we'll put the ephemera back in then we'll do the inside pages of the cover then we'll decorate the cover so I will see you back for the next next video again like comment subscribe this is the 25 days of Christmas ephemera giveaway this was sewing in the signatures have a great day bye